Uh, with us right now is uh, John Rich. And John Rich, uh, one of um, country music's biggest stars, was a big star last night for us. But surprising me today by wearing a Santa Claus. Yes. Outfit. Well, first of all, thanks for having me on your show. And right. Merry Christmas. I uh, think it's time to start saying that. You really want to say that? Absolutely. It's not even Thanksgiving. I don't care. Yeah. America needs to get in a good mood at right. some point. You always in a good Let's mood. Let's bring Christmas a little early this year. Well, I did not know that was going to be your campaign, but we are <laughs> streaming on Fox Nation again. So if you got the app last night, put it on. And you could hear us. We're heard, heard around the country, around the world. So, uh, John, why are you dressed like Santa? This is just one of the so, things. I've got to be on Brian's radio show. Okay, exactly. I just want to put you in a good mood. You work so hard, Brian, and you never get any sleep. And I just thought, you <laughs> know what? Look at the smile. See, it worked. Yeah. No, actually, uh, me and Mike Rowe were hanging out. I was interviewing him for my show, The Pursuit. And I said, you know, Mike, uh, somebody that's got a dirty job I bet you never thought about. He goes, who's that? I said, Santa Claus. And he started laughing. He goes, you know what? You're right. He does have it. I said, think about the chimneys, what the reindeer, yes. behind those reindeer all so, night long. You know point. what's hitting him in the face all right. night long. Yeah. He goes, that's crazy. And then I, I knew that Mike had been a uh, opera singer for about eight years in his life. People I did not know, know that. that. He's got this huge voice, this singing voice. I said, we should do a, a Christmas song called Santa Claus Got a Dirty Job. He goes, that'd be great. I said, I'm going to go to the bathroom. And I took a break. And while I was in the bathroom, I start thinking, Santa Claus got a dirty job. Santa Claus got a dirty job. Santa Claus got a dirty job. And he does it all night long. And I walked out. I said, Mike, I think I just wrote the chorus to the song. And he goes, in the bathroom? I go, it's a dirty job. Right? <laughs> so <laughs> so uh, we're, we're here re doing some recording on that. It comes out uh, November 29th. You're actually re going to record We this? already did. We recorded it in Nashville. Had the Oak Ridge Boys singing backgrounds on it. It really? sounds like Elvira. How, wh how is Mike Rowe? He's incredible, man. But how do you, how do you go from opera to country? Because he's just talented, man. He, it, you'll hear it. When he's singing Christmas music, it almost sounds like an old Bing Crosby record. It's very uh, classic wow. sound, that big voice. So uh, we're splitting all the downloads that come in between Microworks Foundation and the Folds of Honor. Wow. So, yeah. So that's why I got a Santa Claus suit on. Thank you. Um, Lauren just Other than it's just fun to wear a Santa Claus suit sometimes. Well, so, so this is helping Brian to remember to promote the downloads because it goes to two great causes. Yes, it does. Yeah. And I think it's, I think it's the new grandma got run over by a reindeer. I really do. Wow. Uh, by the way, if people are going to be, number one, I didn't even know you knew him. Yeah. So I did not know. So you got to know him the first time when you interviewed him? No, he came through Nashville, and I saw that he was doing a, a, one of his shows in Nashville, and I, I figured out how to find him. I said, yo, come by the house. Remember when you came by the sure. house the one time? Yeah, and you told me not to come back, which is sad. And thank you for abiding by that. Yeah. I appreciate it. <laughs> <laughs> no, he came by the house. We hung out late. I got the guitar out. I found out he was, was a singer, and I couldn't believe it. And then we struck up a friendship. And the next thing you know, he's on the pursuit. And we're here in Hollywood, Florida. And it's good friendship. And now you're both part of the team. I yeah. Mean, I know you guys want to be your independent way. And you want to do this music thing till you get that out of your system. But uh, Mike Rowe, too. He's doing, owning his own shows. Yeah. But little by little, he's coming into the Fox family. I see that. I'm glad to see that. Man, this guy... Is there, he's a real deal, blue collar all day. We love his show. I mean, it's so interesting. He talks about, you know, there's $100,000 a year of welding jobs, you know, out there if you want to go get them. So he and I have a lot in common, and uh, it, we're both on Fox Business, so it's fun. Well, the other thing is we're in this big, this is something that is surprising even to him. He's always talking about getting jobs and getting the skills to match those open jobs from uh, welding to, uh, to working with your hands with a contractor. But since I've talked to you and since I've interviewed Mike, now we're in the big, big, big beginning of this thing of quitting. Mm -hmm. Four million people quit jobs. Quit jobs that they had without other jobs. Right. I mean, where does that come? I never thought we'd hear anything like that. I don't know. How, how, how many of those people were run out of their jobs because they wouldn't take, we wouldn't do the mandate? I don't know. I haven't seen that. Stat. That's a good point, too. Could be part uh, And of I would it. say that some people said, too, is those, those people, some people got laid off, didn't get anything. Mm -hmm. And then they, 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 their, their boss calls them up and says, I'm ready to take you back. And there's a little bit of anger. Yeah. Where Fox was lucky enough, well, we were lucky enough at Fox, they basically. Kept everyone on staff, same salary, even if they couldn't work. Well, they took care of I mean, but, you know, congratulations to Joe Biden because he has followed through on one campaign promise, Brian. Yes. Uniting America. He just never thought we'd be united against him. It's unbelievable. Do you see He has united numbers? us against him. We really have. Now over 50% of the country does not think he's competent to do the job. He was When he got the job, he was up 26 points in that. Yeah. Now it's 50-45. They don't think he's competent to do Not that he's bad at it. Don't think he's capable of doing it. Do you think somewhere in his closet there's a Let's Go Brandon t-shirt? That's got to be. <laughs> I mean, come on. He has made that phrase what it is. I want to bring you to somebody else that you know. 
and he's Jason Aldean. Yeah. Uh, cancel culture. I don't know if you felt it since you hopped on Fox and you make your views known. You told me you spar with a lot of people. Yeah. The country music's next generation tends to be uh, very liberal. Jason Aldean, as make no, you know him better than I do. In fact, uh, I only talked to him once. But he came out and he says, listen, I'm not going to hide from it. Me and my wife are mm-hmm. conservatives. Here's what he said yesterday about what it means to his career now. Cut 41. You know, I think people know where I stand politically. And, and you know, I'm not a guy that's going to go out there and just, you know, start trying to stir the pot just to stir the pot. I mean, I feel like if there's something that I want to say, something that I feel like I, I want to address, then I'll do that. And I have no problem doing that. And there's times where I feel like, you know, I'm... I don't have a choice but to speak up or, or say something because I feel nobody else in the industry or not a lot of people in our industry uh, do that for fear. And, and I just, you know, I feel like somebody's got to be that guy. And if it's me, then then it's fun. Does that sound like anybody you know? Uh, absolutely. So there's this crazy irony going on in country music in that the audience is largely conservative and the country industry is largely extremely liberal. I'm talking Hollywood level liberal. Wow. They detest. They, they 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 would be the first ones to say you're a deplorable and stuff like that. But they're the ones that are controlling all these big country singers and their careers and feeding the music to the tens of millions of country music fans. And the fans don't realize that the industry, a lot of them actually detest everything about the audience. So you got artists like Al Dean, like myself, and, and a bunch of others, by the way, who I will not name. They can they can say it when they want to. Big, giant artists that are afraid to say that they're a conservative, that they support the police, that whatever, anything, because their handlers won't invite them back to an awards show. Country radio might not play their single. Like, you know, it's a real thing. But Al Dean just finally said, screw it. I don't care. I'm going to say what I think. Your freedom of speech has to be more important to you than the than the pat on the back from the industry. I understood. You know, uh, I guess at a certain point, if you have enough financial security and people like your product, I think you can show that courage. I, I've been doing this for a while, playing Bill Maher, cuts from Bill Maher's monologue. Mm-hmm. You know, he's an iconic liberal, very critical of Bush and Trump, obviously, but he's really concerned about his own party and cancel culture. Yeah. And his, his monologue could actually be in Tucker Carlson's prompter. Uh, he is not happy about it. So listen to him last night on CNN talking about Dave Chappelle and others. Uh, cancel culture, cut 40. I'm Team Dave and free speech. He's not afraid of homosexual. Right. Or tr- It's not transphobic. It's that... This trans stuff is very new. I don't think he or myself or any other, again, right-thinking person thinks there aren't such things in the world as people who are trans, who are born in a body that doesn't align with what their brain is telling them. And I don't think Dave Chappelle is transphobic. Can we take a breath? Maybe we are going too far with the children part of this. You know, kids should not be really making decisions about their gender. I mean, Mario Lopez was almost canceled for suggesting that maybe three-year-olds shouldn't decide their gender. This is not crazy stuff that makes you a bigot. And he apologized, by the way, Mario Lopez. Just reminded me of that. How weird is it that he's saying this on CNN? It's because they have stepped so far over the line of reality uh, that liberals and conservatives what i said a minute ago biden and his and his people have actually have actually united people who disagree on many subjects we all look at that and go hey yeah leave our kids alone number one when you start messing with people's kids and you start messing uh with their with their families that that's when people bow up and that's when you see i'm telling you at some point you're going to see guys with maga hats and guys with blm t-shirts probably at the same rally it would be very interesting because it looked like the BLM rally showed up to support Kyrie Irving's uh, refusal That's to right. get a vaccine. That's right. They, and I've said to myself, do they even know what they're doing? Because w- I just well, think I, I, have, I got a vaccine, but I'm not going to tell you. I'm not a doctor. Right. And, and I, Governor DeSantis got a huge ovation last night, not because it was a bunch of Republicans. It's because he let people live their lives responsibly. What a concept. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you look at the, the Black Lives Matter guys for Kyrie. The, the lowest vaccination rate among any section of Americans is black Americans. Why doesn't Americans, Joe Biden say they're that? They're the lowest. because Why doesn't That's Joe Biden say face. it? Because nobody's told him in his ear to say it yet. Right. Uh, but, yeah, maybe no one told him the stat or they say whatever you do, run for the hills when it comes to that. Uh, the other thing I want you to hear from Bill Maher is CRT. As you know, I have the president of Freedom Fighter out. Special thanks to everyone that showed up last night. I was signing it last night. And Sunday, I, don't, I can't sing, and I was never in opera. But I'll be doing a show talking about all my books on stage Sunday. 
at the Plaza Live in Orlando. But here's Bill Maher uh, talking about teaching history and understanding that we did have slavery, but – cut 36. If – when you say critical race theory, if you say that on MSNBC – People think that's a great thing because they're <clears throat> finally teaching an honest history of racism in, a, in this country, which I know no one who is against that. I'm certainly not against that. People should understand that. That's different than teaching that racism is the essence of America. That's what people get upset about. Or involving children who are probably not old enough or sophisticated enough to understand this very complicated issue with a very complicated history. He's saying something totally logical, right? I mean, that's just logical. I mean, that, that's how crazy this has gotten that Bill Maher is, is talking sense. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how far we've gone. Yeah, critical race theory, uh, I, I have seen that actually bleed into schools in Nashville. Uh, we ran across that one time, and basically what they're telling, so like my boys play baseball, basketball. We go to spring break with all these parents, and we all hang out, and there's all different kinds. There's black parents, white parents, Hispanic parents. Just, we're just parents, right? And so these boys are all great buddies, and some of them are black, and some of them are white, and some of them are Jewish, and they're all, all different kinds of guys. They're basically telling the one kid, hey, you're never going to make it right. because of what color you are. And then they look at his friend and go, and the reason he's not going to make it is because of the color you are. Okay, so if you want to hear a little Bible lesson, go to the New Testament and remember what Jesus Christ himself said. He said, you'd be better off to hang a millstone around your neck and cast yourself into the sea than to ever cause one of these children to stumble to mess with them, to mess with their innocence, mess with their minds. They are polluting the minds of kids. They are, they are poisoning them with poisonous thoughts. And, and according to the Son of God, you'd be better off to get thrown in the ocean. You know, that. So that's a very good quote that I would not be able to bring up. You know, who would? Frederick Douglass, in that he read the Bible all the time, even though he was born a slave. You know, most of his friends when he was younger were white. Yeah. And he would mix, he said, uh, and later in life when he wrote his biography, he said, hey, I'm convinced that kids don't see color. Mm -hmm. Having said that, I sat there as I'm researching this to go, oh, my goodness, that's our conversation today. That's right. That's why I'm telling a first grade, not telling a first grade or black or white that's and right. that you should be privileged or oppressed. That's why you're, you're making their minds grasp something they shouldn't and putting bias it's in their head. It's abusive to the kids. Listen, Martin Luther King Jr. would be canceled today if he came out and said – uh, don't judge someone by the color of their skin, but rather the content of their character. No, no, no. Critical race theory didn't allow for that. They would cancel Martin Luther King Jr. Right. Uh, they would. Yeah. I don't know about your school, and I really I mean that. I don't know. I learned in school all this stuff about segregation, white water fountains, Rosa mm -hmm. Parks in the front of the bus refusing to go yeah. to the back. We knew all that. I mean, Muhammad Ali was my idol. What was he complaining about in the South? You guys love me on here, but you don't want to let me uh, mm -hmm. X, Y, and Z. Condoleezza Rice. I couldn't go to a movie theater until I was eight years old, 18 right. years old. Okay. Guess what? We made tremendous progress since then. Right. Talk about the history that brought us to that point. Talk about the failure of leadership and reconstruction implementation. Don't make excuses for it. Study it. But understand we're the most successful multicultural country in the history of the world, and we're making progress every day. I didn't duck an issue. You didn't duck slavery in America. Right. But it didn't make up what made America America. It was a blight on America. Correct. Yeah. And we fought a war over it. And, yeah. I mean, we, and we have had a, a, a man elected twice to president who's an African-American, you know, Barack Obama. Um, you know, to pollute the minds of kids is the most disgusting thing and abusive thing you can ever do to a kid. Right. It has no place uh, in our society. Personal observation. On our uh, book tour that we're on, uh, went to Atlanta and spent a lot of time in South Carolina. And I've never seen more integrated places yeah. than in, in the South. And in South Carolina, the first state to secede. They tried it once under Jackson. They finally pulled it off uh, before Lincoln could take office. And I'm everywhere I walk, I see the most mixed crowd. And Tim Scott said when I was growing <laughs> up, Senator, I, I didn't walk down King Street. Mm -hmm. And he said, now I come here all the time. It's just we just didn't. Yeah. That's what's changed. Please acknowledge progress. Well, you know, and it's, it says to make a more perfect union. It never says to make a perfect union. There's no such thing as a perfect country or a right. perfect society. But we're the best example that's ever happened, and we continue to get better. But anybody that wants to, to thrust this back into our kids, the only reason they would do that is because they want to perpetuate racism. Right. We want to heard, keep it alive. This was a very good segment if I was to grant. It wasn't a perfect segment. But it was very, very good segment. But the suit is perfect. Right. You always, I don't know how you your look so suit. good. Well, my suit, your suit. Listen. Together. This is it. Tell her we're special. We're That's the new duo. Yes. Uh, back in a moment, Brian Kilmeade Show with the great John Rich, dressed as Santa and a black hat.
Hi, everyone. I'm Brian Kilmeade. I want you to do me a favor. I want you to click to subscribe to the Fox News YouTube page. This is the only way that I know for sure that you're not going to miss any great commentary, any great news bites, any great interviews coming your way on Fox. You can get it all here on YouTube. So subscribe right now.